it's such a nice platform to like not only to connect different modules to uh, to each other, but also different communities in let's say suddenly navigation techniques that were only possible for ground robots are now also possible to run to make one of these small quadcopters navigate through an indoor environment as well. Today in Behind the Tech, we pay a visit to our friends from Bitgrace. We spent the whole day with them at their beautiful offices in Malmo, Sweden, learning all about their platform. In this episode, Kimberly Maguire, robotics engineer at Bitrace, breaks down what sets the crazy fly apart. So yeah, my name is Kimberly Maguire, and we're here at Bitrace, which is the company that actually made this one, it's the crazy fly quadcopter. Um, we have designed this and we also maintain all the open source firmware and software that runs on it and also on the computer that controls it. We're here located in Sweden, in Malmö, which is just across the bridge of Copenhagen. And yeah, so this is our office. Welcome. So here in Bitgrace, we specialize on developing for this small quadcopter called the Crazy Fly, which is used by all kinds of educators or research and universities to support their research in control engineering and swarming. And also educators use it to teach robotics to uh, high school kids or a little bit older kids like university students. <laughs> Um, so that's kind of like the main users that use the Crazy Fly for. And what we do is we maintain the software that runs on it, on the computer as well. So they're able to kind of like try out their ideas, both on board of the Crazy Fly C based firmware or our Python based, uh, Python based software on the computer. Yes. Yeah, so. What's the interesting thing is about aero robotics in general, and especially like these very small quadcopters right here, is they cannot carry as much because they have to stay in the air with the with the motors and everything. They cannot carry as much as these ground-driven mobile robots. So they're kind of limited in what they can carry in terms of like cameras or even like in terms of battery life. So you kind of have to be very creative in order to achieve some onboard autonomy on these. But it also makes a lot of fun because they're more, way more agile. They like, you know, you have 3D space where they can fly all around. So that makes it very cool as well. In that sense, um, developing for aero robotics is perhaps way more challenging than for ground-based robots, I would say. So when you think about drones, usually for outdoors or quadcopters for outdoors, they usually do positioning with GPS, like you have in cars. Indoors, GPS, not so handy. It's not so precise. It's actually not that precise outside anyway. But indoors, we need to have alternative ways of positioning. So at least here at Bitgrace, we support multiple ways of positioning. Well, we have um, support for motion capture systems, um, but that requires you to have an off-board computer uh, that's able to calculate the position for the drone and then communicate that to the drone. Um, we also have ultra-wideband based positioning, which enables the crazy fly to determine its position or its, its range from itself to one of these anchors. And if you have a couple of these anchors in your environment, it's able to triangulate its position based on that. Then we also have something called Lighthouse Positioning System, which it comes from virtual reality gaming technology, which we reverse engineer to, well, actually we have a deck right here. We have reverse engineered that technology to place a couple of these lighthouse base stations in the environment, which let out these laser planes. And this deck is actually able to determine the angle of um, that these planes hit the deck right here. So it's able to determine its position on the, as well, and it's fully on board. 
Um, and also we have also a special deck that's able to determine optical flow and range. So I guess that's perhaps also for outdoor uh, positioning sometimes used as well. Um, but those are kind of like the four positioning systems that we that the Crazy Fly supports here and that we maintain at BitCrace. So how the Crazy Fly communicates with the computer is usually through a Crazy radio, which we also sell separately as well. And they're able to communicate, or at least the computer is able to communicate with the Crazy Fly through something that we call CRTP, which is the Crazy Fly Real Time Protocol. And that's kind of like yeah, what it uses to communicate with uh, the computer as well. Um, there is Wi-Fi capability currently only to the AI deck, and hopefully in the future we'll have a Wi-Fi deck for that as well. Uh, but this is currently like the best way and low latency way to communicate with the Crazy Fly if you want to have yeah good support, also swarming support. You can also use one Crazy Radio to communicate with multiple Crazy Flies as well at the same time. So you're able to add different extension decks that uh, give the Crazy Fly some additional capabilities or sensing. And that is usually sometimes that we um, yeah, release new decks for a new positioning system, an AI deck with uh, the camera system that is kind of, uh, or for instance, like a flow deck, as I mentioned perhaps before, and like the multi-ranger, it's able kind of like to do some kind of sensing or obstacle avoidance in a room. And we have some new upgrades coming up for that. Um, the port expansion connector that also kind of enables some better um, yeah, Wi-Fi uh, cameras, uh, like for footage streaming. So you're able to do a lot of like this uh, off-board processing of, of camera footage as well. Yeah, and uh, obviously also uh, we're really working hard on getting a more upgraded version of the Crazyfy out as well, we, that we call the Crazy Fry brushless, with brushless motors. So yeah, there are some nice, really nice things coming up in the near future. So Ross has opened up a lot of possibilities for at least like, you know, our users. We had a couple of external projects, like especially like Crazy Swarm project that enabled um, like the flight of about 50 Crazy Flies at the same time. And connecting it to Ross really enabled researchers to do way more with this such a small platform definitely like with the swarm research it really has escalated a lot of capabilities for sure and it's a very it's such a nice platform to like not only to connect different modules to to each other but also different communities in let's say suddenly navigation techniques that were only possible for ground robots are now also possible to Rod to make one of these small quadcopters navigate through an indoor environment as well. So that's kind of really the beauty of, uh, of it. And that's also kind of why me, um, like us at BitCraze and Drone Code Foundation, we kind of came together as like, why is there not a community group in ROS for aerial robotics? Like, what is this, right? Like, hashtag drones or robots too. So yeah, that's kind of like why we, came together as like, oh, this is something that we can really uh, help each other out with. Um, so the Crazy Fly has speaks for support, but of course it's small, it's only so that much capable. But to really use ROS and ROS2 as the framework to kind of bind things together, there are so many other possibilities that are possible. Yeah, that's only possible for all of our users uh, in both academia and industry. So when uh, we heard that the Drone Code Foundation was coming to Europe, and we are, of course, very dear friends of them. It's like, well, you know, if you happen to be in the neighborhood of uh, Copenhagen, please come by. We have this nice uh, nice new flight space uh, to play around in. And uh, we can uh, come together and discuss new possibilities with each other. And, of course, like, you know, it's always nice to uh, go come back into touch with, uh, with friends. <laughs>